Uh, welcome to the second video in this uh, mini series all about uh, the lighting uh, which has been implemented in version 4.1 of Fantasy Grounds uh, Unity. Um, in this one we are going to uh, cover uh, lighting itself, that's uh, lights other than um, ambient lighting which we covered in the uh, last video. So let's get ourselves uh, an image um, and we'll unlock it. Uh, we make sure that the lighting is enabled and then go to our lighting uh, tab and then we go to uh, add light and this brings up the uh, various uh, options which you have uh, for these uh, lights and the best way to demonstrate exactly what all these things do is to just give you an example so we're going to go to the presets first of all here um, on the drop down we can see we've got various uh, presets. These are kind of programmed into uh, the rule set, so <clears throat> depending on the rule set, um, it, these could be different. Um, so we're going to select a candle, and when we select candle, we see that the light range, the fall off, uh, the color, um, and the behavior and behavior speed all change to reflect this preset. Um, once we have selected all of that we just uh, click uh, where we want our uh, candle to to be placed on the map and if we zoom in uh, we can see a little more clearly uh, what's going on so up here it's telling us that the uh, bright light is going out to a uh, five feet so we can see that that's exactly what's happening here from the center of the light out to five feet uh, radius uh, we've got a uh, bright light shining and we'll forget the fall off for a minute and then we've got dim light which is going out to 10 feet and we can see that the, this area from here to here uh, is a dim light so that's what the uh, the light range uh, shows and then we've got these two figures the fall off figure and basically fall off is the sort of bit in between the light and the uh, dim here it kind of uh, gradually fades from light to uh, dim and then from the edge of the uh, dim out to nothingness so depending on what you set these uh, at it will depend on how hard the line uh, you have or how soft it is so for example if we change uh, this uh, figure here we'll, we'll actually going to go into edit mode first of all and then we're going to select this light by just clicking on it um, and if we go into that and change this 25 to a 1 then you can see that the light uh, fade or the, the fall off is now 0 basically and so it's a hard uh, border between the uh, dim light and the hard light and if we do the same for the uh, the dim you can see now that there's two clearly defined uh, circles where the light ends so this light here is just simply ending and then dim immediately starts and this one here the dim is just ending and then the darkness immediately starts so what the fall off is is a kind of uh, gradation between uh, the different uh, light uh, values and how much of a diffusion you have between the uh, changes or the boundary changes between the two different kinds of uh, light. You can also see in this preset that we've got a flicker. The light here you can see that uh, there is a sort of a flicker going around the uh, edge of the light and it's currently set to a speed of 100. We can reset that or change that with the slider by moving it uh, towards the left we will reduce the flicker and the light will become steadier until eventually at zero uh, there will be no flicker at all uh, we can maybe put it up to uh, 50 um, and that's just the speed uh, that the flicker goes how many flickers you get um, you've got other behaviors here you've got uh, a pulse and you've also got uh, a flash and again the uh, speed uh, you can make that uh, go faster or slower or whatever so you've got three different uh, behaviors that you can uh, choose from which should cover most of the eventualities and of course there is uh, none at all uh, which means that the light is just stationary 
Uh, we can also change the color of the light. Uh, we've got a color picker here, and if we click on that, we get our color picker up. Uh, and just like all the color pickers, if we uh, mouse around them, we can see the light changing color to whatever color that you uh, want. And then you can use the individual sliders here to uh, refine that. The particular one which is um, uh, important really is the uh, alpha slider at the bottom here. Um, and as we uh, move this towards the left, the light gets less and less uh, bright. Um, and so you can use uh, or make quite subtle lights uh, with this uh, slider here. So a good one to know about is the alpha. Um, you've also got the uh, hex code uh, appears down here as well, which you can click on. And then you could copy and paste that into uh, the color picker for another light so that you can have uniformity uh, between your lights if needed. Uh, if we cancel that, then the light just goes back to what it was. We also have an on-off switch. Uh, so if we don't want this light on, um, we can switch it off. Uh, and then, um, you know, at a later point, we can switch it on again should we uh, need to. So that's uh, controllable. The lights don't necessarily need to be on uh, when the characters uh, enter a room. Uh, they could be off and uh, some mechanism might turn the lights back on. And we could also uh, make the light a uh, darkness. So if we toggle this, then the uh, light becomes an area of darkness. And this will completely obscure uh, any light uh, from the player characters. A player uh, who enters this area uh, will see nothing. It will be a uh, complete darkness. So this is useful also, of course, for uh, adding um, a spell uh, areas or darkness spells or whatever uh, onto the map. Um, if we don't like this light, then we can simply just press delete um, to get rid of it, or we can uh, press this uh, delete key here and we get rid of them. Um, if we have added uh, several uh, lights and we want to just edit some of them, and we would uh, go into the edit mode, um, you can just click on a single light which will select it uh, and then you'll be able to edit it. If you want to uh, select more, then just hold down shift and select them. Uh, or if you want, you can uh, draw um, a, a selector around them and then you can edit those particular lights that you have uh, selected. And of course, if you want to uh, just get rid of them all, then you can just select them all and then delete them. Uh, so let's look at another part of this uh, map then, and we'll uh, add some uh, lights to it. Um, in this room here, we've got a bunch of candelabra, so that would be fairly straightforward. Uh, we would uh, select our add lights. Uh, we're just going to select the preset, so why not? And then we're just going to uh, click these uh, lights into a place where we want them. Now you could go to town here and you could put a, a candle on each of these uh, little points, um, but I, I don't think that's entirely necessary. And you can see that the uh, whole room is now uh, lit up to the range of the uh, candles. Um, so I'm going to actually delete these uh, because it will be easier to see what I'm going to do next. Um, so in this room here we've got uh, a brazier and we want to uh, light up this room and we want to make it uh, reasonably subtle because usually um, this kind of thing wouldn't give off a huge amount of light necessarily. So we're going to go into our add lights and uh, we're not going to select any of the presets for the moment um, and we're just going to set up our own light here. So we're going to look for an orangey kind of light so uh, let's pick that one there. Um, we want the brightness to be fairly small. Let's just leave it at 5. We'll leave the fall off at 25. But um, we'll put the range uh, for the dim out to 20. And we'll maybe make the fall off for that something like, uh, let's make it 100. Um, we'll probably want it to flicker a bit, um, but we don't want to flicker it too much. So let's take the... Uh, the flicker down to uh, 50. We can we can click on these and just type a number as well if you if you want. And we're not, as I say, interested in the presets. So now that we've set up our light, we're going to uh, just click here and we're just going to add it into uh, the brazier. 
and you can see that it's casting a fairly uh, bright light around and uh, dim light in uh, an area. And just like in the uh, first video, uh, if we uh, go to the uh, player view, then we can see what the uh, players are going to uh, see here. So they're going to see a fairly bright uh, area uh, around this. Uh, it's going to sort of light up the statue here and uh, it's, there's, the rest of the room is going to be in fairly dim light. And because we set it to 100, we set the fall off to 100, then it uh, fades this light out uh, and diffuses it quite, quite a bit. So just for uh, demonstration purposes then, um, let's say uh, go in and edit this light a little bit more and let's actually make the brightness a wee bit bigger. Let's make it up to uh, 15. And, and you can see now that we've got a much bigger pool of light. Now an interesting thing here is that the uh, statue uh, here isn't casting any shadow. Um, which it normally would. The light would uh, hit the statue and you would see a shadow behind it. Uh, now perhaps there should be uh, an occluder uh, around this statue um, for for that and it, that would uh, do the trick. But we also now have a new uh, occluder type um, uh, which is a, exactly a shadow. Um, and this doesn't have any effect other than to uh, cast uh, shadows. So let's select our shadow caster here and let's just draw, uh, we'll put a line selected, and let's just draw a line uh, at the back of our statue. And now we can see that this uh, brazier is light, or the light of the brazier is casting a shadow uh, behind the statue. So that makes things a little bit more uh, authentic. If we go back to uh, our lights, and switch on the player view, you can see that the shadow uh, or the statue is now casting a shadow uh, from this uh, brazier. So that occluder can be used to uh, make things uh, throw a shadow but which don't um, normally uh, block any line of sight like a table or something like that which might not block line of sight but could cast uh, a shadow. Um, we can also, if we wanted to, uh, since we've got this light, we could also decide that this light doesn't cast any shadows at all. Um, so we can uh, click on the uh, shadows uh, button here um, and that switches off shadows. So you can see that uh, this light uh, is not casting any shadows, even though we have a shadow occluder in there, uh, it's not casting uh, a shadow at all. So that's another option that you have if you want your lights to cast shadows uh, or not. In some circumstances, not casting shadows would be what you would be looking for. Now one other thing I haven't mentioned is that what got this uh, light selected, we can just hold it and click it and we can move it around to wherever we want. We might not uh, want it sitting right in the middle, we might want it sitting there, we might want several of them around, but uh, we can move the lights or move any particular light just by a uh, click and hold and uh, moving it. Um, and one last thing I think as well is that this might just be just too bright, it might just be too orange. And we can tone down the subtlety of this light or, or make the light a bit more subtle by using the alpha channel again just to bring down just how intense this light is. And we can almost turn it down to uh, zero and we can still see it uh, being uh, a bit more subtle than, than it was. Uh, we also of course can change these uh, sliders as well to change it, change it uh, and that might help too. Um, so I think that's uh, lighting uh, in a nutshell really um, and uh, in the next video we'll have a look at uh, token lights and vision. So thank you for watching, cheers for now.